Hi divers, Alec Beers, Tech Tips. Here I am at the Aquarius Scuba Diving Center in Toronto. <laughs> That's uh, what we say up here, what we say is Aquarius in Toronto. Uh, you saw the, uh, the uh, thumbnail and the topic, should we still be using dive tables? Well, I don't want to tell you the answer to that. I'm going to give you just a little wee bit of history and little thoughts on it, and you have to decide what you think, whether or not we should be using dive tables. Let's do a little bit of history first. The dive tables. Now, by dive tables, what I mean is the actual table, uh, based on the old U.S. Navy tables. You know, depth, time, you can't go any deeper than this, you can't stay down, and you're, uh, maybe you don't know this, in new classes, if you're a relatively new diver, say less than two years, maybe you never even saw dive tables. Uh, but there used to be a table, and it showed you how deep you could go and how deep you couldn't go. And then if you came up to the surface, there was a table, a separate table. By table, I just made a, a chart, a, a table that was marked surface interval. Made a lot of sense, right? And, uh, and you, you, you chose the surface interval, whether it was an hour or two hours on the surface. And then if you're going to make a repetitive dive, which is another dive, then you figured out that, and you, how long you stay on the repetitive dive, and you could do that again, another surface interval, another dive, you could six, seven, eight, nine, ten dives in a row, if you were really good at working the tables. Now, the tables were vital. At one time, that's the only information we had to protect us from decompression sickness. You had to know the tables. It goes back a long ways, a long, long ways back. Let me show you as an example. The book that I was using when I was trained. Yep, this is my own book, my own book. Alex A.C. Pierce, that's the way I used to sign my name when I was in grade school. A.C. <laughs> Pierce, Lindsay, Ontario, my hometown. And, and this is the old dive book, and you'll notice that all the regulators in here are old two-hose regulators, all the skills on two-hose. Some of you may have seen this before. The, what I want to talk about, however, is at the very back, every dive book at one time or another, at the very back, had the dive tables. And they look like, they look like this. Here are your... No decompression depth. So if you're going to go to 100 feet, you could get 25 minutes is the maximum length. And, and, and over here, you would choose how long you stay. If you only stay down for 30 minutes, and you, you're in group E. Some of the old guys remember this. And then you would go to your surface interval. So after this first dive is over, you come up and you're in uh, uh, group E, which is right here. And then you're going to, you're going to go uh, stay down for an hour and a half, so now that puts you into group F, and then you take that information, and now you're in group, and then you go over to the repetitive dive table, and you put in here, and you see, that's how dive tables work. And eventually, once you'd gone through those three tables, you could decide how long you could stay down on the second dive, safely. And you could repeat that over and over again. But that was the dive table, and that's the way they were. They were just a paper table in the back of the book. Sometimes we'd make copies of them if you were lucky enough to have a copier. And you might say, well, why didn't you take a picture with your cell phone? <laughs> this is the 60s. <laughs> so some people are still using wooden dial telephones with a crank on the side. Anyway, there were no cell phones. We couldn't take a picture. There were no laminators, very few copiers. So we had these actual paper tables. Sometimes people would cut them out of their book. I didn't want to do that because my book was special to me. I would memorized everything in here, and I was only 12 or 13 years old, and very serious about becoming a frogman like Mike Nelson, and so, and so I didn't cut them out of my book. So there is one book. Now, another very popular book, right to the 70s, into the 80s, Diving for Fun, by a great guy by the name of Joe Strakowski. This was a very popular book. I used this for many, many years for teaching my divers. And you see, this is an upgraded book because in here, most of the regulators in here are single hose regulators. Now, so this is an upgrade. This is getting into the 70s and the 80s. But guess what's at the very back? Yep, the very back, there it is. Dive tables, there they are right there. And, and let me just get here, right here. Okay, so U.S. Navy standard air decompression table. I don't know if you can see that, Kevin, but if you're going to be diving at 70 feet and you're going to be down to 70 feet for 50 minutes, when you come back to the servers, you're in group M. So said easy. And then if you're going to make another dive, you go to the repetitive dive table and on you go. Right in the back of the book, dive tables. All the old books used to have that. Here's an old book printed by Sports Illustrated. Now, this is from the 50s. 
and it talks about skin diving and snorkeling and and all that same information is in here there's another book this is put up by the company healthways this is a technical manual for their equipment but they actually had information on how to scuba dive because there weren't many textbooks around in the 50s there's another one by aqualung aqualung and of course these manuals by the equipment manufacturers of course they promoted their own equipment uh, so they, they, they always did that as they taught you how to scuba dive. So they were trying to sell equipment and teach you how to scuba dive as well. At the very back, guess what? Navy standard decompression table. So these have been around for a long time. BP, British Petroleum. Who bought them? Somebody bought them. I don't know who that is. BP, <laughs> oil company. Skin diving with BP. And on and on and on it goes. <clears throat> of course, the basis for all of this was the U.S. Navy dive manual. Here's one right here, Department of the Navy, Supervisor of Diving, and here it is right here. This is the Bible, if you like, the U.S. and Navy uh, um, Diving Manual. And on here, there's a whole chapter about that thick on decompression sickness and on how to use those famous U.S. Navy tables. And they worked. They really worked. It's just that they were cumbersome. Also, they weren't terribly, terribly accurate. Even if you followed the U.S. Navy dive table, so your depth and your times and so on, there was still a, a slight risk. A percentage of the divers would still get decompression sickness because there's so many variables. Water temperature and, and air pressure, altitude, and the diver's own physique. And did he work hard through the dive? Was he, was he old like, like me? Or, or was he, uh, you know, <laughs> really fit like Kevin? <laughs> anyway, so there were so many factors involved. It was tough to, to be completely accurate using a table that was supposed to cover everybody. So should we still be using them? Hey, if you like the tables and if you're not diving deep and you're not making more than two or three dives in a day, the tables will probably continue to serve and do a good job. Or... Or for $200 or so, you can get yourself into the 20th century. Not even the 21st century, but just the 20th century, the 1900s. And you can get yourself a dive computer. A couple hundred dollars. You can rent them. Strap this on your wrist, and it does it all. Accurately. Tracks your depth exactly. Tracks your time exactly. Tracks your surface interval exactly. Second dive, third dive, and on very very accurately you can't go wrong with the dive computer so which which do you think would be uh, better the old paper dive tables or the dive computer I, i'm not i don't want to make an opinion here i use a computer i have for probably 20 years but i used dive tables for 30 years before that almost 40 years before that so you see i'm right smack in the middle i love them both you have to make that decision. However, accuracy and safety, dive computer. Anyway, there's a little bit of history of the dive tables, a little bit about them, what's good, what's bad, and, uh, and a suggestion that maybe today, certainly for new divers, you've already got a computer. But if you guys have been diving for 10, 15, 20 years and probably have learned how to use the dive tables, think about it a little bit. Okay? All right. Hope there's something in there of some interest to you guys. You take care. Alec Pierce. Tech tips from Aquarius Scuba in Trana. Trana. Bye-bye.